thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So, this year is gonna be different, mostly just because of that massive shift to simul streaming, because COVID is still a thing, people, so stop your whinging about theaters. But what's also gonna be kind of confusing is that a lot of the upcoming releases that we're told are going to come out sometime this year just don't have solid release dates. Or rather, I'm not trusting any release dates not slated for the next month. But we'll do our best. And forgive me for not wanting to tread over the trailers that I already talked about last year. Yes, SpongeBob and his journey to nowhere is coming to CBS All Access. I'm sorry, Paramount Plus. And Connected hasn't given us any new trailers whenever it drops, but even more excited that they got rid of that goddamn generic one word title and went back to the cool old one. I know some have defended those kinds of titles in a thematic sense. You know, Connected, it's like machines, but also family. But how do you tell the difference between the uber popular Disney film and that one horror movie on a ski lift nobody remembers? Really, it's just that arbitrary nouns and adjectives are so boring. Let's go back to titles that gives us an idea of what the movie's actually about. Obviously, a character name or a proper descriptor like Wolfwalkers is fine. Also, the director of Wolfwalkers may have responded to that tweet. It's no big deal, I did not freak out. Anyway. The spell I believe you're looking for is somewhere towards the back. Hang on, you actually talk? Of course I do, just not very often. Many have been severely disheartened in Ghibli's decision to result to CGI for its latest film, and even then it's not even the most polished CGI to come out of Japan because it's not Lupin the First. I will say that its design still has a very distinct look to it. If I didn't know it was Ghibli, I would say that it still had a Ghibli-esque vibe to it. And frankly, when trying CGI out for the first time, they might as well have used this movie. It has been called a pretty good adaptation for the book it was based on, just maybe they should have picked a different book? Because not a lot happens in it. 80% of the movie takes place inside this one pretty small house in one of three rooms. And of course, the trailer picks every single scene and moment of any other location or moment of prominent action. And yes, I say that knowing that a lot of Ghibli films feel like they move pretty slowly, and often the trailers will compile all of the significant moments and actions to make it look way more exciting than they are, but Earwig seems to be the only one where that's actually a problem, even with a talking cat. Story-wise, mischievously clever Earwig, or Erica Wig, is getting used to her new foster home taken in by a witch and a demon. As cool as that sounds, basically nothing happens until the last 10 minutes. Which in any other film feels like it should be the end of the second act, but then it just ends. But congrats, Goro Miyazaki! It is still better than Earthsea. That's what friends are supposed to do, oh yeah. Okay, I take back some of my pessimistic statements from last time, now that we have an actual trailer with actual evidence that Tom and Jerry will be 2D animated. And I admit, it looks very nice, the physical comedy looks solid, and the composition with the live-action backgrounds looks convincing enough. But, outside of those scenes in particular, I don't expect this movie to be anything exceptional, technological achievements aside, based on the history that a lot of animation live-action hybrid movies tend not to be good. Because even when the animated segments are fine, even decent animation alongside bad kid movie level acting is an uncanny valley in and of itself. Despite the fact that everyone is going to see these movies for the famous animated characters, they feel the need like whatever's going on in the live-action generic characters is like just as important despite the fact that they are always the most boring parts of the movie. No one cares about Neil Patrick Harris in the Smurf movies. He didn't need his own subplot. And yes, I know that people are yelling Sonic at this point. I think that Sonic is a bit overrated, but at least it is an improvement on all of the others because it's actually funny, and because yes, Jim Carrey is also actually funny. I am totally open to being proven wrong, but for right now, my hypothesis is that the quality of this film will be more or less directly proportional to the amount of time the human characters are not on screen. I just shape changed! Dragons can do that? Look how close my butt is to my head! So I'm pretty sure Raya is going to be fine, but I do get some people's apprehension concerning the dragon. Just because the dragon is very jokey and the rest of the movie seems to be leaning more serious, Mostly, but we'll just have to see how that unfolds in the film itself. 
whether this character is going to lean more toward Genie's Aladdin or Hunchback's Gargoyles. But friendly reminder, guys, it's not as though Disney or even Pixar have been above the tradition of putting their lamer, juvenile jokes in the trailers to attract family audiences, including some that didn't even make it into the film itself. Besides, action-wise, it looks pretty badass. But regardless of what you think, you're all gonna watch it anyway, because A, no matter what, it's gotta be better than Mulan, and B, we, as a species, owe it to Kelly Tran. I'm also greatly looking forward to the Pixar short going in front of it, which will be choreographed by World of Dance's Keone and Marie, who are incredible. Wow, they got to be in a Pixar short, and the twins, who actually won, got to be in MIB International. So everyone else saw the still of the art and thought that Pixar had decided to hijack Ardman, right? There's definitely shades of that in the design, in the round faces, and the round mouths, and the round teeth. But unfortunately, this is very much not stop motion. Darn, if it was, I would have had the hope that they would eventually try a 2D film and then the cycle would be complete. But as is, this looks like an incredibly adorable slice of life, reincarnation of The Shape of Water meets Paranorman. I absolutely love friendship love stories and think that they're horribly underrated. And actually starring children for a change! Yay, that thing I just talked about! And that water transition is gorgeous. So I am greatly excited. Plus I have my Italian sources that will inform me if they do Italy right, and so far, he's given his approval. Baby Corp will offer a full memory wipe following this experience. Don't make promises you can't keep. Dende forbid we dare to have a sequel with a different Boss Baby character, and we have to take the fully grown adults and make them kids again. Maybe that's just the trailer showing only their involvement, but nah. DreamWorks has historically been a show its entire movie in the trailer, people. Or at least the first two acts. Even so, I still find it kind of funny. How as ridiculous and maligned as the concept of Boss Baby was when it arrived, that as a film it wasn't actually that bad, but the thing that absolutely killed its reputation was being nominated for an Oscar over Silent Voice. By itself, yeah, like the last one, it looks unbelievably mainstream and silly, but it'll probably be fine. Prepare to meet your end! <laughs> if I die, she dies. Yes! Give me my Taika Bo movie to compliment 19's Nautaku movie. Give me Daki sadistically killing civilians with her multiple instruments of torture. Give me my proper Hoshiningi reboot. It's out already? Um, excuse me for a minute. Eh, it's okay. I mean, it is filled with magic and action and heroism, and it, it is very pretty. With surprising voice performances from Chris Sabat and Ian Sinclair. Aw, Funimation letting you boys play outside. I mean, curmudgeonly dude who finds mysterious girl with secret and they travel together. I mean, we've seen this. But now with more magic and foxes. And Daki barely tortures anyone. Honestly, there's not much I can tell without knowing much about the original story it's based on, other than the whole straight hook fishing philosophy and that this certainly makes the character look like a paragon for the ages. And I'm not sure how far this Chinese God's cinematic universe is going to go. Chinese animation is definitely looking pretty cool these days, so it's definitely got my attention. Also, while we're here, so not surprising given how much Neja broke box office there, that we're going to get Neja Reborn, a completely different movie from completely different people. Set in the modern day? I mean, I'm gonna watch it just to see what they do different. The heavens have opened. Your wishes will be granted! Huh? Oh, a peasant boy. Well, this'll be easy. Another one that I've been waiting for for years and is finally gonna get an actual release. I too would like to see Aladdin if the genie was a little bit more of a snob. It looks cute! I guess they were always scared that I'd be a psycho. <laughs> So, as much as I would like to let a lackluster live-action adaptation die, Cruella at least looks like it has potential, but we've said that before. At least it seems like this villain might actually stay a villain this time, looking like American Horror Story Fashion Week, or Mean Girls, but with more arson. 
The comparisons to Joker have been noted, but are probably surface level. Cruella is trying to assimilate into the upper class, not take it down. I might be excited if literally anyone else was making this. Even the director of I, Tanya means nothing. The Disney remakes have ruined good directors before. We have established Disney remakes are not made by writers or directors. They are made by accountants with about all of the energy and life of one. Again, I would love to be wrong. I am just going by past evidence. My only hope is that given that Dalmatians is not one of Disney's more popular franchises, though apparently its recent cartoon is okay, and with a smaller cast, plus being significantly less CGI heavy, and ergo less expensive, maybe the studio will interfere less and won't feel compelled to bland it all up. Then again, it is a villain, and still how very PG-13 and family friendly Disney tends to like to be. Ugh, just please let me be wrong. So, Demon Slayer Mugen Train became the biggest box office hit in Japan last year, but it's definitely due to circumstances. Partly because it was one of the few things that was even in theaters. It coincided with both the momentum of the anime of the previous year, but also that the manga concluded that year, and that as a movie it's a bit of a different breed because it's not filler. It's the actual continuation of the Demon Slayer story based on the manga, picking up where it left off from the anime that, again, was really hype the previous year. Still, given that amount of hype, will it actually live up to it? Well, as said, as a story, it's pretty much doing what the manga did, so we know that it is essentially going to be one big, long, giant action scene that just happens to take place on a train. But because we've also seen the anime, we know that it is also going to look amazing. And not to mention, as someone who, yes, has skimmed over this part in the manga, and also definitely not watched any of the leaked footage, that there is also the part in the middle that may or may not emotionally devastate people. Out of anything else, yes, I can understand the disappointment of not seeing this movie especially in theaters. But at this point, it still doesn't have a Western release date yet, so that question's up in the air. And of course, there's the threat of other anime movies like Tiger, Fish, and Josie, and Violet Evergarden, both of which look beautiful, and the next Mamoru Hosoda film, which looks like he's going somewhat back to his Summer Wars universe? Awesome, but it's probably gonna take two years to get here. And, uh, is that all we have in terms of new trailers that aren't just things from last year? Minions 2 technically has a date, but I wouldn't be surprised if Illumination indefinitely kept it on the shelf until theaters were wide again. Rumble already got pushed back to 22. And yeah, there's that stretch of arbitrary sequels we'll get eventually, like Adam's Family 2, Hotel Transylvania 4, and Sing 2. Oh yeah, and I guess Space Jam. I, I can't bring myself to really give a crap about Space Jam if I haven't seen a trailer yet. Certainly not in comparison to how genuinely excited I am at the releases happening over on Netflix, who apparently is trying to become its own animation powerhouse. Yes, drive that competition. This year, they've already given us Kid Cosmic, the new series from McCracken, and sure, it's no wander over yonder, but it's a solid start to the year. Loving the comic retro aesthetic, and we're finally going to get Bombay Rose in, like, a week. Now, can Netflix get Calamity 2? I was looking for this so hard for the 2020 list, but where do I watch it? France, I would love to watch more of your stuff, but you need to send it here. But then there's things like Arlo the Alligator Boy, which, yeah, looks odd, but if nothing else seems like it's gonna be a great musical, and there's something called Wendell and Wilde, which is a stop-motion horror comedy with Henry Selick and Jordan Peele? Okay, so we already know what my favorite of the year is gonna be. We also have Nimona from Blue Sky- oh. Okay, I know that I've said before that Blue Sky tends to make the more forgettable of the films that I usually rank in a year, but I greatly mourn the loss of this project. But in general, this is just really bad form when a conglomerate buys a smaller studio. I mean, I'd like to think that they wouldn't let this go to waste, especially since it's almost done, but... There's a lot of questionable decisions they're making right now, but while this is tragic, I am so excited at the growing animation landscape right now. And yes, obviously if we extended this video to include series, we'd have so much more from Amazon Prime's Invincible to every anime coming out next season. Odd Taxi looks fun. And then 
whatever Gendy Konikovsky is doing to justify Hotel Transylvania 4. Oh yeah, and something about Avatar Studios creating multiple Avatar animated series, including an animated film. Hey, whatever you gotta do to scrub that live action series out of our brain. And Infinity Train 4, people! So Animaniacs, tell me, what are you looking forward to in 2021? And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of interesting courses to enhance your professional and non-professional life, from art and creative writing, to business and freelancing and management, and of course, film and animation. Indulging in or experimenting with something new and creative is a great way to break up your routine and keep yourself healthy and engaged, especially if it's a passion or skill that you've wanted to try but never knew where or how to start. The classes are mostly less than an hour, so are easily manageable and frequently come with resources as well as projects to get your wheels turning, creating an ideal environment to explore and learn. So no ads and they are always adding new classes and subjects. The animation section especially has a large array of tutorials and courses suited for a variety of skill levels, programs, and concepts. If you want to start from the very bottom, the basics of hand-drawn animation with Johannes Fass outlines the 12 principles of animation and implements them into very simple animated projects, including the ever-essential walk cycle. If you're someone like me that freezes up because you're not even sure how to get started, his explanations are incredibly simple and helpful, breaking the lessons up between the theory and examples to technical execution. I always have to remind myself just to start with the key poses, don't get overwhelmed by the movement right away. It is an amazing bout of comprehensive information for just under an hour. And I'm sure you'll find something that will help and inspire you too. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity.